Hey, what's up, guys? We are back again with a new meta mobile spawner deck. You guys are probably sick and tired of seeing furnaces and goblin huts spam everywhere. Well, what about units that get directly on top of your opponent's tower that still spawn stuff? That's not going to be very fun for our opponent to see a massive amount of witch skeletons, tons of goblins, and piggies coming at them every single second. So let's go jump stray some games, assert dominance, and spam like you've never seen before. And a huge thank you to everyone that's using creator code SIRTAG. All the money goes directly back into the channel, making the videos better every single day. Hey, so jumping into this one against Lokes, what is going on, my dude? First things first, Goblin Hut is our starting play that is always going to keep us safe. If he spams up on the other side, we've got the Mega Knight, we've got the Witch, we've got multiple ways of stopping him in his tracks, and I love this defense. Oh, let's go! Skeleton Army at the river? That is the worst possible thing he could have done. But now the Fireball's out of cycle. He's going to be down Elixir. The Spear Goblins are going to destroy the Inferno Dragon. Now you're going to lock onto me. Oh my gosh. I think I Witch here. I Mega Knight, and then I just take the left-hand tower. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go hard in the paint right now. You already know. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Also, if the Dark Prince is out of cycle and it's getting distracted by skeletons, not locking onto the Witch without the Fireball, I don't see any situation that works out for you, man. Oh my gosh. This is beautiful. I'm going to Goblin Drill on the other side because we still have Spear Goblins. I wonder if the Cannon Cart is going to provide some utility for the Witch. If the Spear Goblin was tanked for, we would have just straight up won the game. It's all good how it is, but you know, that would have been a lot better. I can skeletons counter here with the Mother Witch. I'm going to skeletons the other side. I want to sacrifice them so I can get more value with the Mother Witch. It seems simply better for me that way, right? Like, why would you ever give up the opportunity to get more piggies? So, start of the game works out really well. We figured out what the deck is. It's going to be a graveyard deck with Giant, likely, after we see Inferno Dragon. And we end up seeing the tendency of cycling in a skeleton army at the river. The reason why they go for a skeleton army at the river is to bait out your small spell. So when they go in for the graveyard, you have no re real way or recourse of cleaning up all the graveyard skeletons as they go around your tower. But as you guys can see, if you play against graveyard with our deck, it is a winter wonderland of value. You are getting Christmas presents every single second. I know that he's going to try to arrow that, and then I could snowball back the Inferno Dragon while it locks onto the Witch, so he's not even able to kill it. He wanted to kill it so bad, but, you know, now he's sad. Okay? Spear Goblins are going to come in clutch with Mega Knight, and then I can follow up with the Goblin Drill here. So usually, in this situation, your opponent's going to go in for their Valkyrie or Dark Prince, and they'll drop it on the Mega Knight, and then they'll have no way of countering the Goblin Drill, so the Goblin Drill in the back will always be the best decision. As we said before, it's a giant graveyard deck, but guys, even if he's got Fireball, there's no chance of him stopping the Mother Witch from getting perpetual value. It's one of those cards that no matter the matchup, no matter what you're playing against, Mother Witch is going to still be broken. BG and well played to our opponent. He's going to go for the most desperate graveyard I've ever seen in my life. With 30 seconds remaining, there's no way for him to break through. And that was a pretty easy W, courtesy of the Mother Witch. All right, let's see if we can keep up the streak. What is going on, my dude? So first things first, we like Word for the Goblin Hunt as our starting play. You guys already know that it's a safe play, no matter what. And a lot of times your opponent think that you're going to be running double spawners. So what do they do? They go opposite lane right into a Mother Witch. So I'm loving this right now. And I can Skeletons to stop the Dark Prince in its tracks, get multiple piggies on the left-hand side, and... I actually snipe with a cannon card, so that's what I'm going to do. Why do you hate me? As long as we can keep the Mother Witch alive, I'm vibing with it. Cannon card in the right-hand side, Mother Witch on the left. Split lane aggression is what we like to see. Okay? I don't love the fact that Skeleton Army's coming at me, so I'm going to snowball that back. I'm going to tickle you now. And the Electric Wizard is going to stun me. Do I get a pig? I don't even get a pig there. I don't get a piggy for my troubles. Okay, so definitely not the start that we were looking for, but I firmly believe with the Mega Knight, we can always bounce back. He is literally built for jumping. So, I might be able to go in for a Goblin Hut a little bit lower now because we saw Princess. If they have Princess, it is pertinent for you to make sure that they can't get on top of that, right? If Princess is able to lock on top of the Goblin Hut, do some splash damage, it doesn't feel so good. Look at the Princess going to the right-hand side for no good reason. That is what we like to see. Now I can Skeletons, maybe even follow up with a Cannon Cart at the river. If we Cannon Cart and destroy the Dark Prince, make sure he has nothing left over... I believe that I can go in for a Goblin Drill afterward. Oh, wow. Let's go. Piggy tanky for the cannon cart. Spear Goblin's pushing it forward. That is beautiful. That is literally everything that I wanted to see in a Clash Royale game all coming together. And the Electro Wizard, it's going to die to the tower. So then he has no Dark Prince. How is he going to defend this? No Skeleton Army. No Dark Prince. You have nothing for the Goblin Drill. The Skill Drill, baby. That is the start that I like. 
Yes, sir. That was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it feels phenomenal to get those type of interactions, and it only happens with Mother Witch. If you have a Mother Witch in your deck, there are so many interesting interactions that can just happen that no one has ever experienced before, right? Everything cascaded in my favor. Whether it was the Kandagari getting pushed by the Spear Goblin or the Mother Witch getting a piggy at the last possible second, it was hilarious to see that all happen at once. So I'm going to Snowball, and I will go in for Skeletons here just to make sure that we distract the Inferno Dragon for a little bit longer. If we can kill the Inferno Dragon, then we just win the game, right? Like, we're going to just pop off. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way you're stopping me today. Oh, let's go. More piggy potential. More nightmares. We are manufacturing nightmares faster than anything has ever been seen before in Clash Royale. How many piggies? How many goblins? How many skeletons? More than I can count, guys. It is too dang high. So for the rest of the game, you guys already know the deal. We are simply going to go for skeletons, be able to pull things off to the side, follow up with a Mega Knight whenever we feel like it, Snowball to push back the Inferno Dragon, and there is no chance he's coming back in this one. It was a beautiful game, and as you guys can see, I think our crazy creation of Mega Knight spawners on the move is way too much for our opponent to stop. Hey, so getting into this game, it is all about the splishy splash damage with the Witch and the Mega Knight. You guys already know we are going to be spamming so much counter push that our opponent won't know what to do. Oh, wow, you're going to Lightning right out of the jump? You're showing us your cards so early on. I'm excited about this because we know that he's going to be running a P.E.K.K.A. deck now after we see Lightning and Ram Rider. Usually, traditional Ram Rider Bridge Bam decks would always have Fireball or they would have Poison, but P.E.K.K.A. will have Lightning and might have a Baby Dragon in there too. Wow, he's got a Dark Prince. Okay, so not used to seeing that as much, but in this case scenario, if the Dark Prince out of cycle, we go in for the Goblin Drill and we lay down the Smackdown. This is one of the best things for us to happen right now. Skeletons are going to distract. He'll try to apply aggression on top of the Goblin Drill, and if he drops some like whimsical counter push, right? Like, oh, I was hoping to ban it, then we could go and convert it to our side of the map with our shenanigans of the Mother Witch. But this is going a lot better than I wanted it to, honestly. Done a ton of damage. We're able to knock back the rest of his level 14 champion. And we're in a stupendous situation. He's not able to afford the P.E.K.K.A. so far. So, I wonder what he's going to do to defend this. He can go for an Electro Wizard, but then the Mega Knight is still going to jump on your tower, dude. You have to drop something. Let's go! That's what I'm talking about. If you play against P.E.K.K.A. and they don't have Elixir to stop your Mega Knight, that's the one time that you want to drop it and single Elixir. Usually, uh, I'm not going to have too many opportunities to do that later on in the game. But if you catch your opponent overextending in single elixir with five elixir investments at the river, like, you know, the Archer Queen, probably won't have enough elixir for the P.E.K.K.A. on the counter push. Just throwing that out there. That worked out really well for me, and I'm going to try to keep that up for the future. Also, if you're playing against Ram Rider or Battle Ram or Hog Rider, you can per perpetually lock on and knock their units back with the Snowball and make sure that it can't get on top of things that are mattering, right? Like if the Goblin Hut dies, it's okay. But if my tower dies, that's a different story. That is a huge no-no here. Okay, Puck is coming down. That's fine. I can Witch off to the side. Remember, I don't think this guy has something that's scary like a Magic Archer. So if you don't have Magic Archer, I'm chilling. I can just cycle a Witch. I'm gonna die to Lightning, but it's fine. I can cycle more stuff in the middle, and we will solve the riddle. I'll Mother Witch in the back now, and this will give us a lot of counter pressure with Piggies. So I'm here for it. Goblin Hut up high. Skeletons here. Remember, he doesn't have Magic Archer. Usually, they would Magic Archer in the middle. It would hit the goblins, and it would pierce through, and it would cause you a lot of grief and pain and suffering. But at this point of the game, we're going to get immense counter pressure, guys. The piggies are coming from the front, and then the goblins in the back. The tag team is destroying this man's dreams. Look at that value. The piggy is even going to be tanking for the goblins afterwards. So <laughs> I love it. I'm here for it. Usually your opponent will go in for a lightning, so I don't want to spontaneously spam too much stuff. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the lightning early on. Skeletons should be able to tank, and then I can go for really high skeletons again. The good thing is he doesn't have Magic Archer. That would be the one scary card that I hate playing against whenever I'm playing Mega Knight. But in this situation, we have no problems. The level 14 champion might even be worse than the Magic Archer for him in this matchup. Yeah, and we're able to lock on top of it. It's going to die if I snowball. Oh, I didn't even have to snowball. The Cannon Cart was able to pull off the most miraculous offense ever. I'm able to get piggies too. If we kill the P.E.K.K.A., it's going to work for us now. We enlist your P.E.K.K.A. in our army. And we are pushing her to the highest form of operations, forcing out a lightning from our opponent. Then he has 
drier than the Sahara Desert amount of elixir. We walk away with a win with the Goblin Drill, and we destroy Pekka with Mega Knight. This deck pulls off some pretty epic Ws. Hey, so jumping into this one against Nani. Nani! What is going down? I'm going to sauce out a good luck and immediately go for a Goblin Hut. I have no clue what our opponent's got, so I just want to play safe rather than sorry. If you get too overzealous, if you spam too many cards, you can feel the ramifications way too fast. So, Spear Goblins are coming through, baiting out a Bomb Tower. That's extraordinarily good for me. Because if you slow roll Mega Knight in the back and they don't have a building, a lot of times... You're going to get massive value because then the piggies from your Mother Witch and your cannon card just crushing all of your opponent's stuff, getting you piggies faster, will go directly towards the tower. So that's what I'm going to roll with right now, quite literally. Dropping that Mega Knight in the back and immediately following up with a cannon card or a Witch. Usually, I don't want to showcase my true colors too soon because a lot of times your opponent will not expect the double Witches in the deck. They'll just be like, oh, he's got one Witch. He can't possibly have a second one too. <laughs> it's going to make him so sad. Wait, is this going to work out? Goblin Drill's tanking for the Witch. The Spear Goblins are coming through. The Skeletons are spawning. Why is this deck so strong? Yo, I wasn't even supposed to win the game this fast. I'm telling you right now, guys. It's not supposed to be this OP. We desecrated a Ice Wizard defensive deck with Bomb Tower. Usually supposed to be some of the strongest decks in Clash Royale. But no match for us. You just hurt my feelings. So I really think he's going to get overzealous in Graveyard on the left-hand side because he sees a cannon card coming at him. He'll probably be freaking out. He'll be like, yo, wait, does he not have Elixir? He might not have any Elixir. <laughs> when he gets the Elixir advantage, eventually, he's going to start spamming and he's going to Graveyard right into a Mother Witch. I can feel it. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. So if the Mega Knight doesn't jump on the tower, I'll be a little bit of a sad panda. I deserve that damage. Let's go. I had such a big Elixir advantage that I knew that I was going to get something from that. I'm going to wait, and then he graveyards. That's exactly what I thought would happen. Did I not predict it? Graveyard coming down into the Mother Witch. Skeletons are swarming the Baby Dragon. And yeah, the Skeletons aren't going to be able to kill the Baby Dragon, but they're going to be able to parade through with the Piggies immediately after, giving us three spawners. Three mobile spawners all in one deck. We're true mobile gaming athlete, guys. This is how we became the most ferocious mobile gaming athlete in existence. It was all this moment. Solidify this in history. Write it in your textbooks because you're going to be reading about this and everyone has their kids going to school and middle school. This is the moment that you guys will be witnessing. But yeah, that was a super easy W. GG, well played, and peace out, buddy. Pleasure winning that one. Hey, so jumping into this game against Daniel. You guys already know with Goblin Drill, you want to be spawning as many piggies as possible on your opponent. So if I go for a Mother Witch on top of these two skeletons and then go for a Goblin Drill at the exact same time, this could be limitless damage. We are going to get insane value. The Knight is going to get pulled back. The piggies are going to get on top of the tower. The Goblins are spawning in the opposite direction so then the Knight isn't even able to target them. This is hilarious. We already did a thousand damage to the tower, forced out a fireball, and got this man to cycle his knight too. So everything is going wrong for our opponent, and I think we're playing against an Expo deck. So generally, whenever you play against Expo, it's better for you to save the cannon card, but in this circumstance, I wasn't able to. So I'm going to go for Mega Knight. It's going to jump on top of the Expo. I'm not going to have to worry at all. I wonder if he goes in for Skeletons. I'm going to make a prediction with the Snowball. If I do that and the cannon card locks onto the Tesla or the tower, this could be wonderful for me. Uh, I wish that the... Cannon card locked onto the tower, but it's still okay as long as he doesn't activate King Tower here. He shouldn't be able to because he didn't have Skeletons back in cycle since he dropped it on the Cannon Cart. So he had no cheap way of making sure that the Mega Knight would go directly towards the three. So that's great. We're taking that. That's what we like to see. All right. So in this situation, remember, he doesn't have Valkyrie. He's going to have Knight with the deck. So if I go in for Skeletons here, a little bit better than dropping a Witch near my tower that's going to get Fireballed. I'd rather him Fireball on top of the Goblin Hut. I might have even been better off cycling it lower. There's a chance that he goes in for an Expo here. Your Goblins are going to lock on a tower. Let's go. That is so clean for me. I love it. So the bad thing in this matchup is I do not have a big spell. So if you play against Expo and they drop defensive Expos all the time, you already know that they are a filthy savage. But it's the Spear Goblins lock onto the tower too that would have been mesmerizingly good. I can slow roll Mega Knight in the back because I am up a bit of Elixir and I have Cannon Cart. So since I have Cannon Cart, I know if he expos the other side, I should be fine because he just dropped his Knight. That's his best answer to block the Mega Knight. So I wonder what he does here. Also, he probably is going to have some issues if I go for a Witch at the River because we're going to start spawning Skeletons like a madman. All right, do I Snowball on top of all this? I don't think that's worth it. Maybe Snowballing on the Tower would be ideal too. Yeah, he's just playing this well, so I'm going to slow roll a Cannon Cart back. We'll see what happens. 
the Expos, that's fine. You can Goblin Hunt and Skeletons and get a lot of stuff tanking, so we're chilling. We're fine. We're okay out here. As weird as it may seem, it is kind of the dream if you're able to get a Mega Knight and then a Mother Witch without a Fireball and Cycle for your opponent. Because assume he goes in for something that, like a Knight, he's still going to get a free Piggy. And you don't have Valkyrie, so you have to log on top of the Spear Goblins, and then you'd have nothing for the Goblin Drill that's coming through. Goblins are going to spawn on the tower. Piggies are going to get absolutely up in his face, and that is exactly what we like to see. This is getting so much better for me by the second. Playing against Expo decks and winning? Oh, guys, there's nothing more satisfying in Clash Royale than wrecking a dirty Expo player. So, <laughs> Canicart is going to lock on everything that we need. Remember, he's going to have to fireball this because he just used logs. Then I'm able to go in for a Mother Witch a little bit further apart. Going for a Golden Knight up. Oh, not a Golden Knight. I feel like my Mega Knight feels like a Golden Knight in some situations. He's just so luscious, man. He's so good. He's too clean. The Goblin Drill finishes off the game. That was a great way of winning. I literally mistook my Mega Knight as a champion. That's how good he felt in this game. He's evolved to his final form. And after that win, we are now 6,900 in the world. Like, subscribe, and have an amazing rest of your day.